in the previous lecture we discussed the reliability function uh, with the help of the random time to failure uh, and what the reliability function does is it gives the likelihood that the item has survived up to time t. Uh, there's another way of looking at the item's performance is uh, to find out the likelihood of failure. Uh, not up to time t, uh, but at or near about uh, a particular instant of time t. Uh, so the hazard function does that. Instead of giving an aggregate probability that the item will survive from zero up to the time in question, the hazard function gives the likelihood that the item will fail uh, at time t, but with a twist that the item has survived until that instant. So let's now define the hazard function. So the hazard function is the probability that an item will fail in the next instant given that it has survived up to now as I said and expressing that as a conditional probability uh, it looks like uh, P that the random time to failure capital T is between small t and t plus dt given and that is the conditioning event that capital T has survived up to little t so capital T is greater than t and this is the hazard function times the small increment of time so ht dt is a conditional probability now uh, let's see if we can find the relationship between the hazard function and the reliability function. So let's start from the definition. So ht dt is the conditional probability as you see on your screen. So we can uh, express the conditional probability p of a given b as p of a b over p of b. And that's what we have done here. Uh, if you look at the numerator, then the intersection of the two events that uh, capital T is greater than small t and capital T is between small t and small t plus dt is the second event that I just mentioned. So the numerator becomes P of capital T bet between small t and small t plus dt and in the denominator, uh, the probability that the time to failure is greater than small t is nothing but by definition the reliability function. So now let us focus on the numerator and uh, that turns out to be uh, the small increment in the CDF. So the probability that a random variable is in a small region defined by t and t plus dt would be the difference of the CDF at those two limits. So f of t plus dt capital F minus capital F of t. Capital F is the CDF of the time to failure. We have suppressed uh, the subscript uh, capital T because there is no scope of confusion here. So uh, that is d of f t uh, divided by rt is ht dt that's what we started with so we can express ht as the differential of the cdf over the reliability function and the differential of the cdf is the pdf so ht is the is the pdf divided by the reliability function so the hazard function in one explanation is the density function divided by the reliability function uh, gives us the same information that the item is likely to fail how likely it is to fail in the next instant given that uh, it has survived up to now the density of that so uh, let's see if we can use this relationship to actually uh, eliminate the PDF and express h in terms of r or r in terms of h. 
uh, turns out we can. Uh, f of t, the PDF of t, small f of t, is nothing but the derivative of capital F, which would be the negative of the derivative of r. So ht is minus r prime t over rt, where the prime indicates the first derivative. So now we are in a position to integrate this. Uh, and we have done this uh, in the past uh, in, in high school and in first year of college. So the integration is log of rt over r0, r and the initial time. Uh, that is the negative of the integral of h between 0 and t. And since reliability by definition at t equals 0 is 1, so we have uh, r of t is 1 times exponential of the negative of the integral of ht. So it's the area under the hazard curve. Take the negative of that, exponential that. That would be the reliability function. So that's how the hazard and reliability functions are related. Uh, if we now let us look at uh, the properties of the hazard function. Uh, so obviously it's the ratio of two positive functions. So uh, it's itself positive for all t and t is defined over zero and higher values. Uh, it could be a decreasing function, it could be an increasing function, it could be a constant or a combination of any of those. Uh, it doesn't have to be monotonic in any sense. Uh, but a very important property is that uh, its integral between zero and infinity must blow up. So the integral cannot be a finite number. Uh, so that is also an essential property for a function to qualify as a hazard function. Uh, and that should be obvious because at infinity, the reliability function has to be zero. So that's uh, why uh, we must have uh, this property of the hazard function. Uh, we can measure it. Uh, we can measure it as by definition. Uh, there are other measures also which we will come to uh, later in this lecture. Uh, but we can start with the definition that HTDT is roughly the number of items failing in a window of time t and t plus dt divided by the number of items that survived at this point, have survived up to now. So you can approximate that in a testing program as the ratio of the number of items failing between ti and ti plus 1 divided by the length of that window ti plus 1 minus ti and the number of items that survive at ti. So that would be an approximate uh, value of hazard function uh, from a test program.